Hi, in this slide I want to get across the idea that what we master, learn, and learn how to learn in a, in a business environment uh, has to be in alignment with what everybody else on the team is doing and how the whole company delivers a value proposition for the customer. So what I've done here is I've got a sort of a pyramid. At the base of the pyramid, if we have line item profit analytics so that we can rank our customers from most profitable least profitable and then we can look in the, the most profitable ones and identify clusters of common customers so it's a species it's a niche it's yellow belly sapsuckers and of course we'll find some at the bottom of the report they're very large volume buyers but they're dysfunctionally buying not it's their fault it's just but that we've just created together uh, an inefficient uh, lose-lose relationship so once we can zero in on our five most profitable customers in a given niche, our five most biggest losers, our five most important gazelles, we can talk to these people and we can find out uh, what the, the, the service metrics are that define a service value equation starting foundation with tuning fill rates, both by popularity for the, within the niche and by profitability within the niche. Um, but as we look in this new environment, we, we sort of start to develop a whole new set of vocabulary and little building block concepts that add up to more integrated sort of stories or models. Now, by illustration, over here, uh, I've pointed out that unless we can get in touch with the life cycle of our industry and are thinking about that and where our thinking is and does our thinking lag the reality. In other words, we tend to be still doing product volume pushing financial management when in fact bigger, better, cooler customers are trending towards wanting a demand replenishment solution to lower total supply chain costs, which includes uptime economics and next step in the value chain uh, satisfaction retention. And when we look at the relationship that we have with big customers to realize not all of the inner business process relationships are the same. So we have to go out and tune and redesign those value exchange relationships. And that's going to take supply service value chain selling skills. And to make the service value metrics happen, everybody's got to get reengaged and everybody's got to, everybody's going to want to be part of the solution as opposed to part of the problem. So how do we make the service value chain work specifically for our number one historic niche of customers? So we can renew that core, we can double our volume and quadruple our operating profit because we never thought of taking it to the next level before and we're so distracted being too many things to too many other people uh, in, a, in an unprofitable way. And of course, to make these changes happen, we have to whip out the old kinetic chain checklist and make sure that every step on the kinetic chain is present, uh, retuned to what we're trying to do from a service value proposition and internally consistent with one another. Um, and then we start to, this raises issue about our human resource uh, personnel systems um, and et cetera. Now, when it comes to human resource personnel systems, one of them is how do we tune or re-educate our people to have the new skills they need to do the stuff we're talking about up here. And that's where the issue of mastery comes in because heretofore we've just sort of said, you know, here financial numbers, get out there and do whatever you do to sort of make them happen and hopefully the economy and the industry we're in will lift our boats and we can take credit for it and everything's great. And we can't do mastery individually, collectively as a team for a service process or collectively for a team for the five most profitable customers on a heroic act, unless we start to, you know, do some experimentation, but that's going to be guided by the wheel of learning and from which that we design good, small, cheap, et cetera, experiments. So uh, you'll find that, that when it comes to, well, what, what should I learn how to do to be a black belt third, fourth degree warehouse guy. Well, it's all tied up in these things. These these integrative models are going to shape the curriculum that we're going to come up with uh, so that everybody can do it in a, in, a, in, a, in a coherent, highly focused, cooperative way to give the customer both the best value and we'll do it at the lowest total cost. The difference between best value and lowest cost is big, fat, sustainable profit margins that we can reinvest back in the business and so forth. So we don't get to just sort of do best practices willy-nilly 
and be good at what we want the way we want to do it type of thing. It it, it does have to be strategically coherent and consistent with uh, where we're all trying to go. Uh, thank you.